front, weighing 145 and a half, Danny Givanelli. Givanelli. His opponent from the Greenpoint section of Brooklyn, he's wearing black trunks, weighing 146, Carmine Fiore. Fiore. Main event, 10 rounds, another contest to follow. A lot of people always ask me about Fury and, and, and um, Danny Giovanelli. Uh, of course, that was uh, two different mob guys. Jimmy Knapp had Carmine Fury and uh, Sonny had um, Danny Giovanelli. So now you got Genovese versus the Colombo family. It's, you know, the, the turf war of all turf wars. Giovanelli had just come off a big win against Vince Martinez, and Sonny and, and Jimmy Knapp were in uh, Creasy's. Tony Knapp told me that Sonny said, you know, I think uh, we could make a good fight. And they discussed it back and forth, and they said, okay, we'll bring it, we'll bring it to the garden. They brought it to the garden. Tell me about the Giovanelli Fiore fight. Carmine Fiore fought Danny Juvenelli at Madison Square Garden main event. Right. Jimmy Knapp versus Sonny Francesi, Madison Square Garden tonight. The tickets were selling, they sold something like right, right. 14,000. And that's what it was. Then at the end of the fight, Jimmy Knapp wins decision. So you had Sonny with the Colombo family, Jimmy Knapp with the Genovese family, there were arguments. It was a fixed fight or something. <laughs> but Jimmy Knapp won. <laughs> So anyway, so Sonny was crying around. He said, ah, that was fixed. <laughs> and anybody who took care, took care of a fighter when he retired in those days, they didn't retire with a lot of money. It was the wise guys who put them in the restaurant business, the bar business, yeah. so they kept friends. It doesn't mean that they were fixed fights that way. Yeah. Yes, they were. How? Wise guys got, in, in those days a judge was, a, a referee was a judge, and only two judges at ringside. So, if you got to one of the judges, you might get a split decision, a lose or a win, but you got the advantage. The fighters were never to know that that was being done. Sonny was, was a big, in that, that, that life, he was a big deal. But... I think uh, Jimmy Knapp was the most respected guy in, in, in that life that they were living. They cared about fighters. And that's just the way it was. In those days, you know, you had your, your benefactors. These two fighters had, uh, you know, two made guys as their, as their benefactors. They were the fight game. They'd be right by with my man here. I can't tell him that. <laughs> Sonny Frank, he's a friend of mine. Good man. He's good, good guy. <laughs> he's the best, man. <laughs> My father had a luncheonette on uh, Metropolitan Avenue in Brooklyn, which basically divides the north and the south side uh, over in uh, Williamsburg. So from the time I was a little kid, I was hanging out in his store, and the characters that came in and out of that store were, were uh, of a different era. And diagonally across on the corner of Havermeyer Street, was a very scary looking building called the Highway Lounge. The, door, uh, the windows were always blacked out. People would go in and out very quickly. But I so soon learned that a lot of the people that were coming into my father's store would ha hang out in that lounge. Initially, I didn't know what was going on, but later on I realized that they were the guy these were the guys that you had to respect in the neighborhood. So we had uh, Jimmy Knapp, who used to show up with his car and his driver, come in, eat, talk to my grandfather, talk to my father. Sonny used to come in. I don't think I ever saw them together, but they were always around, or at least in the early 60s they were around. Sonny, I know, used to come in sometimes with Michael and drop him off, and he, Michael would stay in the store and wait for him to come back wherever he went. In New York, an investigation of alleged corruption in professional boxing resulted today in three grand jury indictments against boxer Frankie DiPaola and two men identified by an assistant district attorney, Larry Goldman, as figures in the mob or mafia. They are Joe Calabro and Jimmy Nap Napoli. One of the things that was a very popular conversation in that store from the time I was a little kid till the time I left in my, you know, in my 20s 
was boxing. My father had been an amateur boxer. Um, he actually helped prepare Floyd Patterson for the 52 Olympics, I guess it would have been. So he was always in there. And other professional fighters were in there. Guys like Carmine Fiore, Danny Giovanelli, Patsy Rubino. Carmine was probably the most popular guy that came in on a, on a frequent basis. And every time he came in, people would be, you know, hey champ, how you doing, asking for autographs. Now at the same time, another guy used to come in less frequently, but was always like the life of the party, so to speak. You know, Danny Giovanelli would come in. Everybody loved Danny. He'd be uh, laughing and making jokes and this. It was like it was literally like a like a like a family reunion every time he walked into you know my father's place. The great thing for me was that. And I was nobody, but I sparred with both of them. I sparred with, with Danny and with, with Mooney, with, with Fury. I was so proud of that. I was training at um, a gym in Brooklyn, at the Roebling Gym. It was on Roebling Street in Williamsburg. I was training, and Cy Creasy came, and it was, we, he wanted to set, uh, set Carmine Fury up uh, at the gym. And, and he was he was he was a scary looking guy. I mean, he he was a scary looking guy, but he was just a gentleman. That yeah. Creasy said we need somebody to move with him, and Mooney, and uh, Jimmy Trek, who owned the gym, said, "Yeah, use the kids. He he will move with you nice and 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 it was a great experience. It taught me how to be a man. Both boys cooking very well. Both guys, top ten fighters. Carmine Fiore, well known for his left hook. Um, aggressive fighter. Danny Giovanelli was more of a pretty boy. He didn't fight like a pretty boy, though. And when they got together, there was all kinds of rivalries going on. Carmine was basically a caveman. I mean, a short, squat, very tough guy who, you know, fought very aggressively and was kind of like feared as, you know, he wasn't a guy that you would necessarily be friendly with and approach. You know, he was a tough guy. Danny, on the hand, other hand, was a movie star. Danny was a good looking guy, talented, winning all his fights or most of his fights. In those days, if you lost a fight or two, it was not a big deal as long as you learned something when you fought. Um, and it became a thing in the neighborhood what would happen if Carmine fought. Danny. Carmine Fiore won. It was a, one heck of a scrap. A lot of pride on the line there. There was no reason whatsoever for the two of them to fight. I mean, other than in the neighborhood, people had their favorites, Danny versus, you know, versus uh, Carmine. But there was really no reason for them to fight. However, they were matched. They were matched. And uh, I think it was a big betting fight, which is one of the reasons. I believe the powers that be saw an opportunity to make money if they fought, even if there was no real reason for them to fight. Um, Danny res uh, re you know, resisted. He was he headed to be like a champion. The, the lef that was the level he was at. Um, Danny was called to a meeting with Sonny, and from what I understand, they actually came to the point where Sonny told him he had to take the fight no matter what. Looking back on it, the perspective from my father, he really didn't need Fury at that time. My father, being a good soldier, he did whatever they told him to do. And they made the fight, and he went along with it. But um, he should have fought him a little differently. Fight his fight, and he would have made it a little easy on himself. We're looking at Danny Giovanelli now. This boy comes from a family of fighters. You may remember his uncle, Patsy Giovanelli, was a main event fighter here in the garden a while back. His brother, also named Patsy Fought for a while and was the boy that got Danny here started. My uncle was an advisor for my father, my father's uncle. He was a lightweight uh, contender in the 40s. He was dead set against that fight because he feel, felt he didn't need it. But he got overruled. But uh, to his dying day, he said the fight should have never been made. I'm surprised that Carmine won. You know, at this point, 60 some odd years later, I'm not going to opine, without having seen it or know any more than that, I'm not going to opine as to whether or not Danny had the handcuffs on. Could it have been fixed? 
and he not even know it? Yes, the answer is yes. The money, the heavy money was on Danny, that I do know. I ducked in the room. Then I fought the Fiori, come on Fiori, in the garden. I was a three to one favorite to beat him, but I was decisioned, I, I lost my fight. I didn't fight my fight, I fought his fight, whatever. But that's beside the point, I'm not copping no plea. He beat me. So in your estimation, this fight has always been legitimate? Oh, 100%. My father swore, and he would tell me if there was anything on the hand. The fight was 100% legit. You know, I, I got it from the horse's mouth. My father told me, he says, I was in there taking punches. I was trying hard. Sonny knew how hard my father worked to get to that point. So to blow it on a, a fixed fight, it, it, it's all speculation, it's bullshit. Listen, he lost the fight, you know, and people want to make excuses why he lost the fight. And I'm telling you, he lost the fight because he didn't fight his fight. Personally, I don't think they would do that to my father because I really, uh, Sonny loved my father. And Jimmy also loved my father. Throughout their lives, my father respected both of them. They were good friends and uh, to their dying day, they, were, they really took care of my father. A lot of people don't realize Jimmy was also my father's manager. Later, about a year and a half, two years later, after that fight, Jimmy bought my father's contract. Jimmy, that was a gentleman. There's the bell for round number three. Danny Giovanelli in the white trunks, Carmen Fiore in the black trunks. It was really a good fight. Uh, uh, Danny Giovanelli uh, fought his ass off, I mean, and Carmine Fury. It was just a great fight. It was, but there was no hanky-panky, there was no bullshit, you know, none of that kind of crap. It was a legit fight, but it, there's a lot of pride at stake there. They shook hands, and they, and they was friends. They, they, they became real good friends. They, they, they went to Ring 8. The fans wanted to see it because you had two major uh, contenders coming out of Williamsburg, Brooklyn, with two mob guys that had interest in both fighters. Years later, I used to go to the neighborhood or with functions with my father and everybody in that neighborhood always brought up that fight. So that was a natural, that had to happen. And believe me, I know through the course of boxing, there's been a lot of fixed fights and things like, but I can honestly say my father, you know, throughout his career, it was, everything was on the up and up.